Hello and welcome back to No Bullshit. Today we're talking about the new movie Blade Runner 2049, the sequel to the 1980s classic that fans have waited over 35 years for. But does 2049 live up to the hype? I sure think so. I think anyone who liked the original will surely find this sequel a worthy addition to the franchise. 2049 takes all the best elements from its predecessor and expands upon them, and it adds lots of fun new twists too. Starring Ryan Gosling as the new titular, tit titular, titular, as the new titular Blade Blade Runner, 2049 proves to have more action, equally great effects and scenery, and an even better, more developed story. I will admit though, the movie feels a little long and slow at times, but if you're prepared to slog through a 2 hour and 43 minute runtime, it's certainly worth it, especially for dedicated sci-fi fans like myself. But leave it to feminists and SJWs to make this about them. There have been numerous videos and articles trying to attack Blade Runner this week for various social justice reasons, mostly accusing the movie of being sexist and anti-female, which I think is utter bullshit, but before we get into that, spoiler warning ahead. We're going to have to get into some of the plot details to discuss these points, but I will try to keep it to a minimum and not ruin the entire movie or anything. Well, with that out of the way, our butthurt feminist article for today comes from DigitalSpy.com in a piece called Can We Talk? Talk about a big problem in Blade Runner 2049. The writer begins by complaining about the male-dominated casting, which is obviously just them nitpicking. There's nothing wrong with a male-dominated cast. Fem Nazis just love running up to popular movies and TV shows and complaining that there's not enough women, without realizing that the male cast is often the reason people want to watch this particular movie to begin with, or at least part of the reason. I mean, even women prefer watching men, especially in the action and sci-fi genres. And do you ever wonder how come you never see men going up to movies like Bridesmaids or Girls Trip saying they need more men? Well, that's because men are smart enough to recognize the fact that different genres and stories require different mixes of male and female actors. Oh, and also, men aren't jealous little bitches who shamelessly go after the media's most popular releases and try to force their way into them. That's just not our style. Harrison, when you got that call to say, listen, we're making another Blade Runner yeah. and we want you to be in it, what was your reaction? So what? <laughs> <laughs> Billy said, would you be interested? I said, how much? As as, Show me the money. <laughs> Next, the article says that the women that are in Blade Runner aren't in good enough roles for them, claiming they're all robots and subservient types, which isn't completely wrong. There are two female sex bot type characters, but there's also the police lieutenant played by Robin Wright. She bosses Ryan Gosling around most of the movie, so that kind of deflates the whole argument that all the women in the movie are weak and powerless. And back to the sex bots. Well, having women sex bots in a movie led by men makes a lot of sense when you think about it. If the writers at Digital Spy want to write a movie with female female leads and male sex bots, by all means, go right ahead. But for this movie, the writers of Blade Runner 2049 chose to go this way, and that is their right. And quite frankly, I don't think it's sexist for a screenwriter to cast it either way. Replicants are the future. Now we will talk about the writers of the movie more in a minute, but first I want to talk about the sex bot thing for a moment. Feminists and SJWs despise the idea of sex bots. They hate that it's becoming possible in the real world, and they can't even stand the fictional versions in movies like Blade Runner. Sure Sure, this is nothing new, but no one seems to be asking the question why. Sure, the femmes claim sex bots are sexist and anti-women or some shit, but I think we all know that's just an excuse. It's pretty obvious women who hate on sex bots are threatened by them. The idea of a perfect artificial woman scares feminists because without the power of their pussy, they basically got nothing. Sex bots are a threat to these vapid, useless women who have nothing more than sex to offer men or the world. That's why beautiful, smart, amazing women don't have to worry about this kind of stuff because they're irreplaceable. It's the gross, mean, waste of space feminists and SJWs who have to worry. That's why they attack the very idea of sex bots every chance they get, even if it's just some characters in a science fiction movie. They'll still shamelessly attack them as sexist. And now we all know why. <laughs> no, I said, show me the script. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the writers of Blade Runner 2049, because this digital spy article had some qualms with them too. Check out this quote. The only problem is, it was written by two men, directed by another, and was led by two more. Now we're certainly not saying men can't write or direct women, just that, in this case, it probably would have been good to have a woman involved at some point in the writing process. Eh, I don't really think so. Every time I've seen a woman forced into a production for arbitrary reasons like this, it really doesn't end well. This to me reads like the reporter is trying to come up with a solution to their made-up problem.
problem. In reality, 2049 was already a great movie that was well written and well made. Adding a woman writer wouldn't have changed anything, and I'm willing to bet the SJWs would still complain regardless. If it had one woman writer, they would say it needs two, then three, then four. You just can't win with these kinds of people. I think I found him. That's not possible. If this gets out, we've bought ourselves a war. The last qualm we'll get from Digital Spy really takes the cake. It involves the movie's big reveal, where Deckard, Harrison Ford's character, returning from the first movie, well, it turns out he's fathered a child with one of the sex robots from the original. Now, while I was watching, I took this as an interesting sci-fi setup intended to explore themes like humanity versus artificial intelligence, crossbreeding, technology versus biology. But the Digital Spy crew took it a bit differently. I quote, is Blade Runner 2049 envisioning a world in which power human men are trying to erase human women entirely? What the fuck? This movie writer lady at Digital Spy, Rosie Fletcher, is so goddamn defensive about this shit. And quite frankly, she sounds like a bit of an alarmist. The idea in the movie isn't to erase human women. Sure, it's got men using sex bots, and in one instance a baby is created from it, but who's to say it's just men using sex bots in the Blade Runner world? I always thought there were women doing the same kinds of things with male bots. And when Harrison Ford had a baby with the girl sex bot, I I immediately thought to myself, hey, I wonder if a human woman can have a baby with a male sex bot. I guess Rosie never thought that far. And to be honest, I don't think she's really doing much critical thinking at all. Seems like she just thinks the Blade Runner world only consists of exactly what we see on the screen. I guess she has no ability to think beyond the scope of the camera's lens. Fortunately, I do. And I'm sure you guys watching do too. So no, I don't think 2049 is on a path to eradicate human women in its world. I think there are plenty of humans of both genders using sex bots of both genders, or all the genders, whatever the fuck you call it, a million genders, and all these couplings could possibly make hybrid babies one day. Just because our lead actors are male and their sex bots are female, that doesn't mean there aren't females banging male sex bots in the same world. I'm sure there are. What I really think is going on here isn't so much about the movie, it's more about this female author at Digital Spy. She's threatened by sex bots, clearly, and has a creeping fear human women will be replaced by them one day. And that shows in the way she's viewed and responded to Blade Runner 2049. She claims these are possible messages and implications made by the movie, but I really think it's just insecurities and SJW tendencies she has coming out in her review of it. Did you get your knitting needles out? Because I know you like to relax. Oh, we're going to go there. Knitting. We're going to go with the knitting. Oh, we it's going to be like I that. Look at your jumper. I just looked at your jumper <laughs> and I thought, yeah. Did you knit that? This is what I did on set. I knitted this sweater. It's a, it's a nice sweater. It's Blade Runner uh, inspired. In the end, Blade Runner 2049 was a good movie that deserves praise, not social justice condemnation. Unfortunately though, as of recording this video, the movie is not doing too well at the box office. But that's not a total surprise, since the original didn't fare too well with moviegoers in its time either. Perhaps 2049 is destined to be a cult classic like its predecessor, or maybe more people will go and see it next week, after it gets some more buzz going. What do you guys think? Do you want to see the new Blade Runner? If you did see it, was it good, great, or grand? And does it have an anti-female sexist tone like how this article claims? Comment your thoughts below and thanks for watching No Bullshit. One quick announcement about our Patreon page. Before we go, first if we get back to 1000 per month, I'll be recording a full video with my beautiful face. Which if you haven't seen my face reveal yet, it's on there under the rewards for $1. Next, I lowered my reach goal down to 1500, which will give you guys the very first feature your length no bullshit movie so go on to patreon.com slash no bullshit and sign up today even just one dollar per month really helps think about it like this we have over 200,000 subscribers here on youtube so if i just get one percent of you guys to hop on patreon for a dollar we will not only pass our reach goal and get that movie I'll also be able to not worry about ads and getting shut down here on youtube i really love doing these videos full time for you guys and the best way to help with that is to sign up on patreon thanks again for watching our new episode See y'all next time. I let it go back to when we played as kids, but then it changed. That's the way it is. Come on. Come on. That's just the way it is. Things will never be the same. One more thing, I want to give a special thanks to these amazing Patreon supporters. You guys are the best, you guys went above and beyond the rest, and I love you so much for it. If anyone else wants to donate or join our Patreon crew, link in the description. Thanks again. Well, how did you enough. find the stunts? I found them extremely difficult, <laughs> which accounts for the fact that I hit this guy one time. That's show business. The story is that I missed him 99 times, and yeah, I no, hit him You know, they say don't meet your heroes, I would say don't get punched by them. <laughs> <laughs>